I had the most unbelievable channeled message last night and I'm going to share it here with you. So if you're new here, I'm Michelle. This is Angel Souls. This is what the angels want you to know. We're going to tell you what's going on and what to do with the information, how to come on through. Now, I've got all the cards laid out here. I will go through all of them. I pulled out some little retro decks here, <laughs> some little like retro angel decks. So we're going to be going through that. But first, this channel message I received last night. Separate planes, separate planes. We in this world are now living on separate planes. And so if we imagine someone is in a whole other dimension than we are maybe, hang with me as I say this, they're not going to understand where you're coming from. What's more, you're not going to understand why they act the way they do. Why are they being cruel? Maybe on their plane of existence, that's how you get by. That's survival. But on your plane of existence, it just drains, diminishes. Okay. Now I did put out the question, what do you guys want me to talk about? What topics would you like me to cover? And someone did bring up the D word. Okay. <laughs> so here we're going to call it darkness. And I thought it was an interesting question. I don't know if I'm going to do a whole separate video on it. Maybe I will. But I think this is kind of part of this channel message that was coming through. So we don't have to play on the same playground as that type of darkness. Now there's going to be regular duality consciousness contrast. Okay. That's, we got the light and the dark. Without the dark, you wouldn't be able to perceive the light. You would have no idea it even exists. So that's kind of why that's in play. But a lot of those darkness beings have been sort of shoved over to this other plane. Now, some of you out there are going to be like up in arms and going, no, they walk amongst us. Of course they do. I'm not saying that they're not right here next to us. But if you imagine you have your energy field, right? If that were a pane of glass, that's what we have between us. If you break that glass, if you smash into it because you're angry or you're upset or whatever, you just left a, an open hole for that world to come on into yours. Now, if I'm not sure if this person, and thank you for your question, by the way, I don't know if you want me to shout out your name here. So you know who you are. Thank you <laughs> for your question. Actually, you have quite a few of them and I'm going to go through all of those in other videos. But, you know, when we have these experts on that type of energy and they get more into how they exist, why they're here, what they're up to, um, maybe even very, hmm, I don't even know what to call it, like low energy ways of dealing with them, like fighting fire with fire. We're not doing that here, okay? Because just playing and entertaining it is kind of, you're, ugh, do you want to stand there and face it? I don't, <laughs> I don't at all. Now, just like angels will work through people, this darkness will work through people as well. Now we have terms for that. You've heard me use the term plenty of times, narcissist. It's not just the way the psychological community breaks that down. P.S. The psychological community is filled with them. It's amazing how that goes. So separate topic anyway. <laughs> but like if, if we're kind of, um, like I said, breaking that glass, allowing that energy to come in because we think, hmm. They're even telling me now because we're made to think that they're like the crying child outside that needs to come in. And finally we break down and we let it in. Or it's that person who says, hey, I'm your twin flame. I love you. This is the most romantic story ever. And then you let them in. P.S. Uh... Beetlejuice, have you seen it? <laughs> I went and saw it. I'm going to make some videos on the clock app. <laughs> Having a little fun with that. But the comments I've heard, and this is relevant to what we're talking about here, so hang with me. It's just an example. There were specifically women making comments on videos saying, what I would do to have a man that obsessed with me. Separate plane. Now, I'm not saying they're out there with the darkness. I'm not, who knows what plane they're on? Who knows what planet they're on? Okay, I don't, whew, it just shows you the unhealthy modeling that a lot of us were raised with. And 
the unhealthy, not just with our families, but within the world, especially decade by decade. We can really kind of break that down and see what we've been conditioned to think, right? So give this some consideration. We are on separate planes now. So this idea of you having to save someone, yeah, they're, giving, they're coming with another message here. Um, the spiritual community is filled with darkness. I run across them in my line of work. They come and get readings. They pretend to know everything about spirituality. But I'm sitting across from them and they're cruel. Like they're looking for any, I can feel them trying to find a crack in my energy field so they can get in. And if they can't get in, they will start trying to break the glass, right? So this is, so to speak, so this is where you have somebody across from you who's acting like, I'm totally into this stuff too. I'm super evolved. I'm super spiritual. I'm all these things, but they're interrupting you. Pay attention to that. That's not just a funny little ADHD thing. No, it's not. Okay. I mean, yeah, if you have ADHD, you might tend to interrupt. But what I'm saying is I'm not talking about someone who is quite innocent, innocently interrupting. I'm talking about somebody who doesn't want to listen to anybody else. They think that what they have to say is the most important thing. So they're interrupting, they're trying to act like they're the know-it-all, diminishing, devaluing what you are saying. And it amazes me because these people come in and they pay. They're paying for this. And it's weird that they won't let me talk. It's weird that they won't let me give the service that they're paying for because they didn't pay for the service. They came in paying to feel control over someone. That is the way the darkness tries to crack at the glass. Why is this more relevant than ever? Social media. Yeah. You get those readers that are very ill-intentioned. You can feel it. When you land on one of their videos, it just feels like you're being pulled underwater. Or you're suddenly scared. Or you feel like a bully just showed up on the scene because they did because they did. How can we handle them? We still got to get into the cards here. Okay, so hang with me here and thank you for hanging in for this longer content. Uh, depend, they're saying right now, it depends on where you are. Sometimes it is very, I, you know, I'm not encouraging dark arts. <laughs> Don't, okay, that's going to attract a man. And if you're doing that, you're trying to get a man, I guess. But some people don't know the difference. Like you think you're protecting yourself, but you're opening the realm. Saging, for example, that's just a clearing. If you don't fill that space back up, it's going to fill up with whatever is readily accessible. So if it's your stress, it's going to be the stress. If it's that nasty, awful boyfriend of yours that comes through, it's going to be his energy that fills up the room. If you ruminate on your pain, the pain comes back, okay? So not encouraging anybody to spiritually sidestep or pretend like things didn't happen, but processing it. For some people, those kinds of grounding arts might be helpful, but we'll leave that up to people who are experts in that field. Just be careful because you're gonna have somebody who, oh, I, it makes me sick. I'm so sorry to like be so blunt about this, but it makes me sick what is out there. But what I can tell you, and the good news, this is the easy way, <laughs> the angelic way. This is how you can do this, okay? Angels can do everything a little more simplistically when you open your heart and you allow them to come in, okay? Now, we do want to be careful with this because there isn't a person watching who's so pure that you don't have a dark angel trying to come at you. We're in a duality consciousness by design, right? For whatever freaking reason, I don't know. But, <laughs> but we're here and it's always trying to balance. It's always trying to work itself out. So if you're not careful in what you're opening up to, you can have that negative influence. Now, a lot of you ask, how do I know the difference? That can become a longer topic, of course. But more than anything, you, I don't know how else to explain it. You feel a terror come in. And I don't, I don't know if it's because we get so brainwashed to think that 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 terror is excitement i think we do i think we do people think that that's love and it's not 
they think they found the one it's not <laughs> okay so you just want to be careful and i always love and you guys are going to laugh if you've gotten a reading from me before because i always say better to overdo it than underdo it right so i'll say you know really high frequency words around invoking so if i say archangel gabriel god's purest love and light come forward be with me now tell me what you want me to know help me feel and experience the message help me to understand it very clearly let there be no room for misinterpretation <laughs> even that i would maybe i should revamp that not say misinterpretation help me to clearly understand it thank you i love you and so it is so when you feel like you have even just an entity stuck to you that happens all the time that we'll, we'll talk about it another time but you know they get stuck in our energy field sitting with and you can start with archangel michael i know you guys knew that i was going to say that but metatron ariel zadkiel Raphael, gabriel it doesn't matter okay it doesn't really matter ask them to come in and their very presence pushes everything else back out why our frequency these dark being entity frequencies and then the archangelic frequency it's too much for those other beings to be around okay so when they come forward please know make a note of this the whole archangel is not coming and being next to you if someone says yes they are they're super arrogant they have darkness working through them they are trying to mislead you our hu i've said this in so many videos our human bodies cannot have a seventh dimension well maybe now maybe hold on i'm about to take back what i'm about to say <laughs> if we're in a fifth dimensional state and we've raised the vibration of our bodies you can have a little more of that contact okay because you can handle a little bit better but if you're somebody who you love gossip you love playing games with people um life is about networking it's not about true friendships everything's very surface level for you you never grew up you always party still in your 40s and 50s i said what i said okay you're still <laughs> what are we doing okay you're not in high school anymore i'm sorry you're like michelle's so judgmental well I, fine i don't know what to tell you okay that like we have to <laughs> at some point take stock of what we're putting our energy into and when you're young you're still exploring i get that but at some point, if you're still finding a thrill out of, out of that, eh, I'm not saying like once in a while, you know, you act like a kid, you know, fine, whatever. I'm talking like people who do it chronically. That is not going to be conducive, for example, to having an archangel come and be close to you. Not because you're a bad person. It's just you're busy. You're distracted. You're being very 3D right now and you are choosing that. So they'll leave you alone they never go away but they'll they'll let you be to learn your lessons okay so the full archangel is not going to come forward it's going to be sort of layers of their energy if you want to see it that way and when they come forward the way you can tell that it is actually an archangel or even your guardian angel you feel the love you feel peace you feel like everything is exactly how it should be you start realizing how odd the world really is all right that's how you'll know that they're in there then ask them to remove the entities to keep the darkness back now sometimes people have a little bit of a hard time with this and i've done it myself where that darkness starts fighting and it lets you see it and it's terrifying and then i get fed up and i remember they don't have any power over me I carry light they can't do nothing with it so i go ahead and i let my emotions <laughs> not get the better of me right and i let the light push that out and even last night as i was doing this channeled message i could feel that energy like trying to make its way in and it was even laughing there was something that was posing as an angel and started laughing but i know i've been doing this I've actually been sensitive to this since I was a kid, but doing it professionally for 11 years. So I know what, what it feels like. I know what I'm looking for. Be gone. Okay. So <laughs> it doesn't have to be complicated, but when you have these archangels coming in and they're doing that clean sweep, some people like it as cord cutting. You can see it as the light dissolving. That's all well and good to cast away anything in your energy field. But then 
there's your part. You've got to shift your mindset. And this is where focusing on, say, the chakra system and clearing out the chakra system, that's helping you as a human focus and be more aware, right? It's mindfulness. It's mindfulness. This is what we do when we do a body scan. So they can help us. But if you're not ready to let go of your thinking, you're going to rejuvenate what you just try to clear. I hope that makes sense. So that is a way that we can keep that back. Yes, there are lots of things going on in this world. No, I don't think those are, I don't think those are humans doing that. No, I know it's not humans doing that. Are they being taken over? Yes. Is it supernatural? Sometimes. Man-made? Sometimes. So we have to be careful. We have to be careful what we're letting in. Now, on the surface, not surface, but like in other news, we have the cards. And I went ahead and I pulled all of them. The first one out here is New Beginnings. And I will point out that there is a bouquet there. This almost looks like a bride. But so for some of you, that might be quite literal. <laughs> but this is more of that new beginning. And it feels like there's a union. That's what the bouquet symbolizes to me. Uh, coming together, finding your real support. So for example, if, and I've done this my entire, like I was just thinking about this the other day, my entire life, I have found myself in groups of friends who are non-friends. And it's like mean girls. Like I've, especially grade, even in grade school. Yeah, even in grade school, there were cliques. There were these, cool kids, one day they like you, another day they don't, you know, all that. And I realized that, say about like times I was in LA and New York, I was like, was anybody ever a really true friend? No. And then when I got to Colorado Springs, whew, I'm sorry, but Colorado Springs has a lot of the darkness. A lot of it. A lot of it. And I'm not talking like, oh, there's like crime or what. I'm, I, no. That's an energy portal. Not the whole city. Well, maybe the whole city. I think it's more like little, little portals going on. It was rough, but it's also one of the best places to transmute and transform. So there you go. So the next card we have here is Miracles. And weirdly, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. She's got her finger out. Now that's, it looks like her right hand. So here in the United States and in the culture I grew up in, uh, the ring is on the left Hand, but she has her hand out like this and there's a light hitting that so there's a lot here about a union a marriage uh clearing away the darkness right the darkness trying to always surround you like I, the example i was just giving clearing that away and allowing some true beautiful connection to come on through we have trust now if you're like me and you've had those trials and tribulations with the darkness and you've had to transform through that and you maybe found yourself not feeling loved not when I say loved I mean I'm talking like I don't feel like I'm okay right why does no one love me I'm not talking about the needy people who need to feel like popular or they have to they their whole self-value is based on whether they're in a relationship or not that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about no matter how I show up, no matter as good of a person as I try to be, I don't feel understood. I don't feel loved. I don't feel appreciated, you know, those sort of things. Those are usually traits of a survivor, a survivor of maybe psychological abuse, spiritual abuse. What's that look like? It looks like church sometimes, some churches, not everybody, not everybody. I know some lovely religious people who I love and adore. Okay. Like it's not everybody, but some people weaponize that definitely. But they've been physically and otherwise abused. You're the ones that have been worth the most the entire time, but no one could understand you. And you thought it was a bad thing, but really it's a good thing. They're not on your level, okay? 
<laughs> no, I'm not trying to like give you a big hit. But what I'm saying is like the, because they couldn't fathom what you brought to the table, they tried to destroy it. And that is something that is unfortunately human nature. If I don't understand it, I'm going to try to destroy it. That's what people tend to do. It's disgusting. I've used that so many times, that word. <laughs> signs. Let's talk about signs. Now, signs from angels can be incredibly fun, very exciting. People love this, so let's talk about it. Signs from angels. What might that include? You hear pennies from heaven. I was actually asking about that as well. I'm like, all these signs from angels, like, where did that come from? And actually the pennies from heaven, uh, it came from just like, it came from people. Like basically people made that up, but the angels aren't going to say, well, that's wrong. That's not from me. You know, they're not going to do that. If they know that placing a white feather near you will get your attention, they'll do it. If they know that placing a penny near you is going to get your attention, <laughs> they're going to do it. But we could talk more about some of the, maybe as we humans would say, crazier examples of signs from angels. All in prep for this video. There were some things I wanted to get around. And believe it or not, it's been almost, it's been like 10, 11 months since I moved. I still have not unpacked everything. I got fed up. I said, I can't look at it. I'm just going to throw something over the boxes and they're still sitting there. That's it. Okay. Like that's it. So I can't find anything. <laughs> so I'm going through and I'm asking like the angels, like, can you help me find this one thing? Now, some people really get upset by that. And that tells me that they, I don't know. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to waste energy on it. But angels will help you find things, especially Archangel Shamuel. Okay. And now it's so good that I don't even have to be like Archangel Shamuel, God's pierced love and light. Will you please help me find this? It doesn't even happen. I'm like, where's the, and I look over and there it is. And literally I just looked in that area several, several times. A very popular one. People are getting this tattooed on them. People are, <laughs> oh God, they're naming their businesses this. 1111. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it is. Uh, but I think now the collective has put so much focus on 1111, but done nothing with it that it has diminished its value a little bit. So not every 1111 you see is from the angels. Like I said, sometimes people are, they want to turn everything into a trend. And unfortunately, that's what happened. It became trendy. And now it's lost its oomph. It's lost its oomph, okay? <laughs> so, I don't know. That's a longer discussion. But, you know, people have 444 tattooed on them, 777, all that stuff. That's all well and good, but you put it there. The angel didn't come up and, like, stamp you with something. You did it. It's not quite the same thing. Now, do numbers hold a frequency? Absolutely. Is that frequency being on your body doing something? Sure. I wouldn't encourage anybody to go get it tattooed on them necessarily. I mean, it, you can wear a t-shirt, <laughs> you can wear a necklace or something that says it. That's fine. Yes, it's doing something in a vibrational sense like that, but that's not an angel sign necessarily. It might be for someone else, but again, if you put your free will to go, you know what, I'm going to put 777 on my arm. And every time everybody looks at it, they'll remember me for how I was assigned for them. Gross, bro. Different plane. That's our new saying. <laughs> Different plane. It, it gets weird, okay? I know. But if you're watching this and you're looking down at your arm or your leg or whatever, you're like, oh, offensive. I have 1111 on me. Like, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. I'm not saying that. As far as recognizing the signs and knowing when it's from angels, it's a slightly different thing. And yes, the darkness will try to use, you know, number manipulation to get you to believe. Usually that, because so many humans are like, is he the one? Human people who date male energy, okay? The energy, right? Uh, or somebody who embodies that energy. Oh, there, I don't know what it is about that dynamic. But there's a pattern, okay? <laughs> like there's a pattern. 
But this whole thing of like, does he love me? 11, 11. That means he loves me. That means he's my soulmate. It means that da, 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 da. And it doesn't help that we have these toxic readers out there who are backing you up on your nonsense. Okay. And then you think they're the one you get married and you bring kids into the situation. It's a horrible situation. And now those kids are dragged into it too. Very specific, I know. <laughs> but no, and I'm not even thinking of anybody specifically. That's just a story I've heard too many times. Too many times. So when you see something like a repeating number, if it has a flat energy, it was probably marketing. Okay. If you look at it and get a jolt of like love, like you just feel like you fell in love for a second there, that's your angel. And I'm not, oh God, I know we got to be careful with that because do you know what falling in love actually is? When I say jolt, that doesn't mean like the anxiety jolt. It's not butterflies. It's not that. Okay. It's sort of like, oh, there you are. I've missed you. Right. Kind of feeling. So there are the signs. Trust. We have one more here that I pulled from my other retro deck. This is, um, what is it? Life's path deck or something. I don't remember. I bought it eons ago. <laughs> energy healing. Your natural energy healing abilities are an important part of your life purpose. And this is an important thing for you to engage in right now for yourself. This is going to help not only clear away what is trying to attach to you, but keep it away so it can never come back at you again. All right. So this has been a very long video. Thank you for hanging in there with me. I am sending you all so much love and take care. Bye-bye.